What is up boys and girls, it's Seb here with Modify Up. In today's episode, I'm going to fix that rock hard pedal in Gene 13. Since I'm using an unboosted brake master cylinder without a pedal ratio correction. So we're going to fix that and this applies to any car that's going from boosted brakes to manual brakes. So let's check it out. Now imagine, you just had an awesome intake manifold made, but come time to fit it, you realize that it doesn't fit because you didn't take into account the brake booster clearance. Well my friends, this is exactly the predicament I found myself in when I changed to individual throttle bodies on Gene 13. I'm running a custom DC Fab Plenum mated to 4AGE silver top throttles on a modified 4AGE inlet manifold with a custom adapter plate mated to the CA18 lower intake manifold. This long runner design ensured that I didn't lose any low down torque, but the downside was a very large package. I made the mistake of rushing before an event to make big changes to my setup, which led to even more rushing and making temporary fixes to get back out on the track. There are a few solutions to clearance issues like this. You can fit a pedal box with twin masters inside the cabin, or you can run a remote booster, or you can run a booster delete kit with the stock master cylinder. But I decided to be super awesome and made a booster delete plate for a single compact master cylinder without correcting the pedal ratio because, well, the car was on the hoist and I was too lazy to pull the pedal assembly out. Fast forward to today, now I'm sick of it. I want brakes that actually stop without me needing to jump on the roids before I drive. In my case, I didn't have room for the stock master even after the booster was gone, so I was forced to save as much space as possible. Now I'm not going to go into master cylinder sizes in this video, but I can tell you a 7 8 master with 4 piston calipers on the front and 2 piston calipers on the rear without a pedal ratio correction is extremely hard underfoot. Yes, it stops, and I even ran two events with this setup without correcting the ratio, and it did okay. But let me tell you, the pedal is harder than your creepy uncle on Viagra. I'll drop a link in the description for some good calculators to get you in the ballpark for master cylinder sizing. But just note that each setup is different, and just because your sister's roommate's brother said a size is right, doesn't make it right. A lot of this is about driver preference and feel. Now, once you modify your braking system, it needs to be approved by an engineer to be certified for road use in Australia. So check with your local authorities, and if you don't know what you're doing, please get a professional to do the work. Brakes are no joke. You can put yourself and people around you in danger if you're a hack. So do this at your own risk, but please be responsible. The easiest solution here is to use a booster delete plate with the standard master cylinder, so you retain the tandem master cylinder circuit and all of the stock brake lines. This means if for some reason you bust a brake line, you'll still have brake pressure at one front wheel and at least one rear wheel. There are companies that offer these delete plates, but the best ones we've seen so far are the delete plates from Hone Developments, as they already have the pedal ratio correction built into the plate. Since I changed to the single compact master, you'll notice that there's only one line coming out of this master. This runs to a distribution block and then to a proportioning valve so I can adjust the front to rear brake bias in cabin. So keep in mind, if you want to run a similar setup, you'll have to redo all of your brake lines and add a prop valve into the system. But the process here is the same when doing a booster delete with the standard master cylinder and the appropriate delete plate. So let's get into the nitty gritty here. Go ahead and undo your brake lines, hop inside and pull the clevis pin out from the brake lever. You want to un unclip any sensors on the brake pedal like the brake light switch and undo the four bolts that hold the booster pedal assembly in place. In the case of a Skyline or Silvia, there's an extra bolt that holds a pedal to the steering column for extra rigidity. So get those off and the whole pedal will fall out, most likely on your face. Once you have your master and brake pedal out, we're going to make a new mounting plate and do some basic measurements to figure out what the current pedal ratio is and then we can calculate what the new ratio should be. 
The pedal ratio is the distance from the pedal pad from the pedal pivot point. Then divided by the distance of the master cylinder clevis pin or push rod from the pedal pivot point. So let's measure it this. Take your brake pedal and measure from the center of the pivot to the center of the brake pad pedal and write this down. We can call this measurement A. Then measure from the center of the pivot to the center of the original clevis pin hole. This will be B. Very simply, divide A by B and that gives you a ratio to one. In the case of the Sylvia, it's 3.9 to one. Play with your B measurement to get the ratio between 5.1 to one and 6.1 to one which is basically the standard for any manual brakes. Keeping in mind, the higher you go up in ratio, the more force you'll exert into the master cylinder. But in turn, you'll increase the pedal travel up to the point where your brake pedal travel can exceed the distance to your floor pan. Also, the higher the ratio, the more you'll have to modify the pedal and bodywork to accommodate the master, as increasing the ratio will by definition require a higher mounting position. Now you can fit your chosen master to the delete plate, or in my case, make up a new plate with the revised master cylinder position. The master must be moved the same distance as the clevis pin so that the push rod remains on a flat plane and you don't side load the master cylinder pistons. This is as simple as drilling four mounting holes for the plate, two mounting holes for the master and one large hole in the middle for the master cylinder to pass through the plate. Moving on to the pedal. In some cases, you'll need to clearance the top of the pedal bracket depending on what master cylinder you're using. The Wilwood master cylinders mount with its bolt vertically, which interferes with the brake pedal bracket once the master is moved up. Stock master cylinders mount the bolts horizontally, so make sure you check your clearance before you test fit. Also note, you can see here that I've added a few extra welds to the brake pedal bracket here for strength. These are a weak point in all Sylvia's and Skylines along with the clutch pedal bracket in which I've had both of them break on me. Now you can go ahead and clearance the body. Make sure you cover up your pretty engine bits with some non-flammable sheeting and on the inside of the car you can put a wet towel inside the cabin so you don't start any fires. The amount you need to clearance the body will depend on how far you have changed the ratio and what style master you're using. So here's the finished plate and modified pedal. You can see the second hole drilled for the clevis pin above the original hole. With a new pedal ratio of 5.7 to one, we can fit everything back in the car and bleed up the system.
try this pedal ratio out on track. I can tell you it's made a world of difference. Gone is the rock hard pedal where you almost needed to use two feet to stop the car. Now we have a firm pedal feel with brake pressure required slightly more than a boosted brake system. But the upside is there's a much more direct feel to the brakes. Boosted systems do not output pressure to the brakes in a linear fashion. So the pedal consistency just isn't there. Now with the corrected pedal ratio, the car stops on a dime and has a more precise feel. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Whether you're chasing a more direct brake pedal feel for grip racing, or you're chasing a little bit more room for that JZ swap in your S chassis. If you like what you see today, make sure you hit that like button or consider subscribing. That's it from me, bye.